Are you unsure of what might be preventing you from getting pregnant? One of the ways you can find out is by getting your blood tested. Hi, I am The Venting Chick and this is a four-part video series where I share with you my journey trying to get pregnant after 40 years old. And there are four things that I did not only to calm myself and give myself some reassurance, but also to help me get in tune with my body and my body's needs to give me the best chance at conceiving. In this video, I will talk about what I wish I knew before I spend a bunch of money going to a fertility expert, for example. The second thing I want to talk about is how AMH levels can provide information about a woman's ovarian reserve and fertility potential. I will also share how blood tests can be ordered online. That is what I did, saving you money. And then how getting more in tune with your body gives you a peace of mind. Women often get blood work order when trying to get pregnant to help determine if we're ovulating. This also helps with evaluating our overall reproductive health. This is a little bit of my personal timeline. The first time that I had blood work done was six months after starting trying to conceive. I went to see my regular OBGYN to check if something was wrong because you know six Six months. Six months you will think, okay, we have been trying and nothing has happened. Maybe there's something wrong right there. I just wanted to check to make sure that everything was okay. My regular OBGYN doctor gave me a list of blood tests that she wanted to take, which were estradiol, and forgive me if I say that wrong, progesterone, TSH, FSH, LH. So basically I had some tests done on days 3, 21, and 28 of my cycle, and everything came back normal for the first month. The thing is that I got pregnant two months later. Unfortunately, I had a miscarriage. Uh, on my week seven or eight. After that, everything was a little bit of a blur. I mean, just the trauma of the miscarriage, the sadness and everything. It was, it was really tough for me. And after a while, I felt ready to try again, but I didn't want to see a doctor yet, if that makes sense. So I decided to do the blood work myself and compare it to the first time I was tested and after the miscarriage. I already had the list of the tests and results from my OBGYN, so I knew which ones to order. And I like to research this kind of stuff, so I thought I would be, it would be a good idea to do it on my own. When I did the blood test on my own after the miscarriage, I included AMH. That was not initially ordered by my doctor, but I wanted to know my AMH levels. And by measuring AMH levels, doctors can get an idea of a woman's ovarian reserve and use this information to tailor their treatment plan. This is if you go to a fertility expert, like I said. My regular OBGYN did not test for AMH at the time. With low levels, going back to it, doctors might recommend fertility treatment, medication, IUI, IVF, or egg donations if needed to help improve the chances of getting pregnant. So, as an older mom-to-be, I wanted to figure out what was going on with my body specifically my AMH levels. I just wanted to know if my egg supply was low or if my eggs were not good, which could have been the reason for my miscarriage in the first place. So I got all those results back and thankfully everything was normal. And my HMH, AMH levels were actually pretty good for someone my age. I was 40 at the time, but my levels were similar to a 34 year old woman. So I checked. However, despite the good news, I still couldn't seem to get pregnant. So then I decided to see a fertility expert. And boy, was I in for a surprise. The basic blood work that my regular OBGYN had ordered was nothing compared to what the fertility expert wanted. And let me tell you, that fancy blood work was not cheap. I had to pay everything out of pocket because this is not covered by insurance and I had to pay like 900 out of pocket. It included the same LH, FSH, TSH, but then they were doing urine analysis. They were including something called albumin. They were also checking my insulin, vitamin D, testosterone, vitamin B12. And once the doctor had all these results, he decided to put me on vitamin D, vitamin B12. And I think at the time I had a urine infection. So he sent me some medicine for that as well. Don't worry about trying to write all these tests down. Just check the description of this video because I am going to put all that in a PDF so then you can see like the guide of all these tests because it was it was a long list. Long story short, 
he took all these blood tests and I went with his recommendation and advice and took the vitamin supplements. He also prescribed me with Clomy and I was still not getting pregnant. And the thing is that the visits with the fertility experts are pretty expensive. They want to see you pretty often too. And I felt terrible with the Clomy. So once we had spent around 2000 out of pocket, I think that was just two months worth of seeing him, I decided not to take the medicine anymore and not to continue with the fertility expert treatment because in my head I was like, okay, we're doing all the blood work, taking this medicine. Everything looked kind of normal. Everything seems okay. And I'm paying all this money and, I, and no baby. So instead of continuing to spend a lot of money and consult with experts, I decide to do it on my own and do the little analysis to see if my levels of progesterone, TSA, AMH were consistent from cycle to cycle. In the past, I had only been tested once and then I became pregnant the following month. So there was really no comparison comparison be between consecutive cycles without medicine. I wanted to make sure that my blood levels when I became pregnant weren't just a fluke. So I decided to have my blood tested for three consecutive cycles just to be sure. I found out that there are a bunch of labs and tests that you can order online without the need of the doctor's orders. There are many, many different companies and labs that you can order your blood tests from. So it is like you can check discount labs, request a test, you can go to the Quest uh, lab website or LabCorp and order the test. You, you can do that. And for example, I saw that maybe Quest was the cheapest in each individual test. But since I was ordering a bundle of tests at the same time, then Quest somehow was more expensive you couldn't bundle it and get a discount. So the one that I primarily used and I used it several times was New Century Labs. They were the cheapest and they have everything I needed. They bundle it like I wanted. Their website is super easy to navigate and they have amazing customer service. A quick side story, I paid an online blood test and for some reason the, the browser didn't refresh. So I ended up paying twice. Then I noticed that they call me and they were asking, do you really mean to pay this twice? What are you trying to do? So I was like, so surprised. I'm like, well, I was actually about to email you. I made a mistake. Somehow it didn't refresh and I ended up paying twice. I can see it on my credit card. And they were like, no problem. We got you. So they reverse one of the payments, send me the orders for the test and just reassure that everything was okay. So that was the customer service that I was so pleased. And after that, I was just decided to keep them and keep ordering the test from them. I didn't do any further research with other places online to see if they were cheaper. I just kept doing stuff with them. And seriously, getting my blood work helped me understand my body at the time. It helped me relax knowing that everything in that aspect was normal. Because of course, when you're trying to conceive and you're not getting pregnant, the last thing you are is relaxed. And the anxiety is like, super high. On one hand, I was happy because the blood work came back normal. But on the other hand, I was wondering why is this not happening? So I mean, because of the blood work, I knew I was ovulating. I knew everything was normal, but I really had a lot of joy and peace of mind having this blood work done for me just to know that at least something was normal on my end. And once I knew that my blood levels were okay, I then started to monitor my basal body temperature. Basal body temperature is the temperature of the body at rest. By tracking your basal body temperature, you can get a better understand, understanding of your menstrual cycle and identify patterns that might be helpful in predicting when you are most likely to ovulate. In my next video in this series, I will cover just that. Just remember, this is me sharing my experience of what my doctors ordered for me at the time. And I think it might help you if you cannot go to a doctor or you cannot go to a fertility experts, then at least you'll know if something is off and then maybe you can consult your primary physician or even your OBGYN and inquire about it. And that might help you in your process and in your journey trying to conceive. I hope it really helps. If you have questions, please write them down. I'm going to try to answer everything within my knowledge and reach. And anyway, if you enjoyed this video and you got, got to this point, thank you so much for watching. You might like to check out future videos. So please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.